presenter today, and that is Pete Olson with Basin Commerce. Thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. All right. <clears throat> It was a quick drive down from Chaska this morning, so thank you guys for having us, for hosting us. Like I said, my name is Pete Olson. I'm a co-founder at Basic Commerce. Um, our CEO, Tom Venable, who has done a couple of these, uh, is out traveling, meeting customers, and trying to do some uh, some business. So, so I'm the uh, I'm the better half of that relationship, just so you guys know. So we are called the Uber for Barges. In six minutes, we're going to talk about what we do, why we're doing it. Uh, and uh, how we help our customers uh, improve their business, okay? So, <clears throat> what are we trying to do? It always starts with the problem. The problem is very simple, and it's in front of everybody. When you drive down the street, the roads are full. When you drive down the highway, the roads are full. Uh, if you happen to buy something, oftentimes it comes on rail. Rail's full. The U.S. Department of Transportation says in the next... 20 years, the amount of freight that's going to move on the surface is going to increase 40%. That's 40%. Where's it going to go? They're making a lot more roads. They're not making a lot more uh, rail, if you will. Is, is this still on? Is it okay? Okay. Well, we'll keep going. So, truck and rail are at capacity. It's got to go somewhere. And there's an opportunity that we're going to, we're going to talk about where that can go. The second part of what we're doing is, is the bulk freight market that we're focused on. So think of bulk freight, think of grains, think of other agricultural products, think of fertilizers, think of coals, think of, of oils, uh, salt, for the roads. It's a market that is pre-internet. It's a market that really hasn't changed much in the last 100 years. So there's an opportunity for us uh, to take advantage of technology and, and really bring this market in the 21st century. It's so antiquated, this is a lot, a real contract that we, we have with one of our barge carriers, okay? The only reason I'm calling it out, they have the word telegram in their contract. <coughs> telegram, telegram. What do we think there's a solution to the problem of not enough uh, capacity in our roads and our rails? Uh, a disorganized market, we think there's two answers to that, to these problems. The first one is the America's River System, it's called the U.S. Um, um, waterway System. Think of the Great Lakes, think of the Mississippi and its tributaries, think of the Ohio River, the intercoastal. There's a lot of capacity available to move products on river transportation. We think that by shifting that those goods and services not only is it economic, but it allows some of the congestion that's happening on our roads today to kind of somewhat be alleviated for tomorrow. So what we're trying to do is take a current process that's disorganized, it's one-to-one -one relationships, there's a lot of brokers in the business, uh, and we're trying to bring technology into a new market process. Where we essentially sit in the middle, and we've got a marketplace that we're building and have built that brings together these buyers and suppliers in a single location. The answer, coming from technology, I've spent 20 years in e-commerce, Tom, our CEO's done it for 30 years, is to bring the cloud to a marketplace that doesn't really know what that is. So coming together with an online marketplace, the Uber for barges, as we've been called in the trade press, um, that's what we're trying to do, that's what we're building, that's, that's the opportunity for us. We see the second opportunity in a disorganized marketplace is what we call backhauls. So if you guys are familiar with logistics and trucking, you know, it's where something is empty, going from point A to point B. Well, in the rivers, there's an awful lot of barges that are empty going this way, and the same number of empties go back. So why can't we improve that process? Why can't we make it more efficient for everyone who's shipping to take advantage of that slack capacity? And the third one, which is actually pretty interesting, for the most part, Barges don't move very fast. If you guys have ever driven down the Mississippi or one of the big rivers and you see these barges, they just kind of plot along. But part of the problem is, for the most part, the owners of the commodities in those barges don't really know exactly where their stuff is. Imagine that. You have a half a million dollars worth of goods in a barge on the Ohio River and you can't pinpoint where it is. So part of what we're trying to do is bring the technology to track those barges 
and give it to our customers. So that's what we're doing. It's pretty interesting. We're having a good time with it. The team has three legs to the bar stool. So myself and Tom, our CEO, come from e-commerce. Uh, we have a business partner, Scott, and his son, uh, Tyler. They've been in the commodities trading business for about 30 years. So think fats and oils and cheeses, uh, salt, sand, frac sand. Um, there's some stories we can talk a little bit about afterwards um, with more time about Scott's uh, interactions and, and how we really got into this business. But the short story, Tom calls me one day and says, I met this crazy guy at the bar. That's how all good stories start. And he's telling us about frac sand. And about three, four years ago, when oil was at $120 a barrel, everybody was buying frac sand left and right. And we said, well, shouldn't there be a marketplace? How do you buy it? How do you sell it? How does that work? And we thought, well, let's go create a marketplace for frac sand. And then oil dropped to $20 a barrel, and we said, well, that was kind of a stupid idea. Let's not do that. But through the process, what we learned, it was the logistics. How do I move the sand itself? That's where the opportunity comes in for us. We realized it was disorganized, it was terribly disjointed, and it was really difficult to kind of find all the pieces and put it together. So the third partner, Dan Nisbet, one of our advisors, he owns a river terminal in Winona. It's kind of a unicorn. Uh, meaning he's moving product in and moving product out, which is not very common uh, from a river terminal perspective, especially for someone who's kind of third party to the public. So Dan, we started talking to him about Fraxane, and as the market went down, we said, well, <laughs> what about this idea? He liked it so much he invested in us and really is a believer and brings a lot of credibility uh, to the marketplace in terms of what we're trying to do to the industry. Um, so it's been a, a, a real benefit. You can see some of our partners, some of our resources. So we've been in business now. Really, this is our second sort of full season. Um, we started in October of 2016. We did a little bit of work there. Moved a couple of barges for a couple of these customers, you see. You know, last year, we've got a slide and we'll talk about it. Um, we, we did, obviously, much more business than we're going to kind of move in. So I'll show you the numbers here in just a second. The traction, as I mentioned. <coughs> We launched our marketplace last year in April. We've been developing it from about October of 2016. So we launched after about six, seven months. We moved about 160 barges last year. Our gross bookings or gross revenue was a little over $4 million. So first year in business, $4 million, you know, $250,000 in net revenue to us. You know, that's a pretty good business. You know, I've done the startup before. Um, Tom has done several of them. So we feel like the early traction for us has been, been really positive. Um, and, and how do we get there? Well, again, we use Scott, we use Dan, we use those relationships. And as we've gone through and continue into this year, we, we kind of understand what our headwinds are. You know, the first one's inertia. Right? People don't want to change. People don't want to do anything. What's worked the last 100 years should work for the next 100 years. So that's a competitor to us. The second one are really brokers, technology people. They're not, sorry, non-technology people. Those are those relationships, those one-on-ones early on. So when we talk to somebody, they say, well, I'll just call my guy, call my gal, and uh, they give me a rate. Is it a good rate? Is it a bad rate? Well, I don't know. It's a rate. I've known them for years. So there's an opportunity for us to take advantage of that. And furthermore, from an opportunity point of view, there isn't a lot of technology in this industry. So we are the first mover in what we're trying to do, which, which comes with its own advantages. How much time? Two minutes. Two minutes, okay. So from an acquisition standpoint, we're trying to do a couple of different things to kind of figure out which channels can really work for us as we really get to scale. The first one happens to be river terminals. So people like Dan, every once in a while, a customer his calls and says, hey, can you give me a couple of barges? Okay, he calls a relationship that he knows. So he's part of the problem as well as part of the solution. Um, we have um, a sales rep in St. Louis, that's where Tom is today actually. Um, she comes from the from the barge world, so she's a legacy barge uh, sales rep from our point of view. So 15 years, so she's going after sort of the large shippers, you know, hundreds of thousands of tons of stuff. Um, that's who she's kind of targeting. And then we also have an inside sales team. So our sales and outbound approach is kind of multi-pronged today until we kind of figure out which one is really going to work for us. So so far, again, we think that it's been successful across the board. Financials. Up and to the right, uh, you know, we think again, we'll probably do about 10x what we did last year, so we should do somewhere in the neighborhood of $2.5 million. 
Um, Scott has helped us kind of lock in some contracts, so helped slay those dragons already. Um, but you can see kind of the growth curve as we build adoption into the market that we're trying to go after. Right? So what are we doing? In short, we are trying to disrupt an industry that hasn't changed since, since uh, you know, Huck Finn yeah. and Tom Sawyer in the rivers 100 years ago. Uh, it's one of the few remaining industries that we've been able to find that really hasn't embraced technology in the business process. Everyone has a phone in their daily lives. We want to bring that to them in their professional lives. Um, we think by automating river commerce and ultimately longer term, the movement of bulk goods. You know, today we think about rivers, but there's no reason we can't put on a big ship and send it off overseas to Turkey or Morocco, wherever it's going to go. Um, and, and ultimately, that's sort of underpinning sort of where we're really going. You know, we think leveraging the waterways reduces congestion, gives the supply chain more freedom from an economic point of view that they could take advantage to continue to build out the goods and services that they're doing. So that's my time. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you so much.